House of Fallen Trees. Nestled amongst the forest and the gothier green lawn's graveyard, it's home to one of the most mysterious families in The Sims 2. Many players aren't even aware of their existence because they're already dead when downtown is first loaded. But if you take a look into either of the aforementioned lots, a spooky story starts to take shape. This is a deep dive into not only the Triku family's lore, but also the things that influenced their creation. The progenitors of the family are Jenicor Triku and her husband who took her last name, John Smith Triku. Jenicor is notable for being the only one in the family with pointed ears. Perhaps she's some kind of supernatural being. John Smith, with his typical everyman name, is unremarkable in comparison. They had two daughters, Janelle and Nylicet. When they married, their husbands, Kavornin and Kiernan, respectively, took the Triku name as well. Janelle and Kavornin had a son, Fricorith, and Nylicet and Kiernan had a daughter, Vodwin. Strangely, Fricorith and Vodwin actually look more like their aunts than their own mothers, with Fricorith having blonde hair like Nylicet and Vodwin having black hair like Janelle. Baby is swapped at birth? Hair dye? Recessive genetics not presented in the game? It's up for speculation. Additionally, Vaudouin has negative relationships with all of her family members except for Korith. Her blonde cousin may have been given preferential treatment during their childhood. Or maybe, since she's wearing a private school uniform and he's not, she could be resentful towards her position as the probable next heir. Because they're all dead, teasing information out of them can be difficult, especially since most of them are buried at Gothia Green Lawns. The game sets ghost type to starvation when you send a grave to a community lot, so we don't know how they died, except for John Smith, Vaudouin, and for Korith. For John Smith, the others have memories of receiving inheritance after his death. That only happens if a Sim dies of old age, and he was an elder, which means we can be pretty much certain that he died naturally. The rest of the Trikus were not so lucky. At the time of their deaths, Jenicor was an elder 14 days from dying naturally, Janelle, Nylicet, Kavornin, and Kiernan were all adults, and Fricorith and Vodwin were teens. We know Vodwin and Fricorith's real cause of death, since their graves stayed at the House of Fallen Trees. According to memories, they were among the last to die, although not THE last. The chronology in the memories is a little jumbled and contradictory, which suggests they may have all died around the same time. Vaudouin died from fire, though interestingly, none of the family have memories of the fire itself. The issues with memories may just be an oversight by Maxis, but there could be explanations which I'll go into later. Vrikorith died from being crushed by a satellite, which makes him the only pre-made sim to die that way. I don't know if this is an established theory or not, but there is some evidence of the satellite possibly being a crashed UFO, which could have caused a fire that killed the whole family. Across the street from Gothier Green Lawns, there is a big gaping hole, and there's an alien spaceship crash site to one side of the city. In fact, if you wait long enough in neighborhood view, you may see another one fly by. However, if we look in Sims 3, another picture unfolds. Fricorith is the only Triku to make an appearance in Sims 3. He's buried at Hollow Ground Cemetery in Moonlight Falls, which is interesting considering the game is set 50 years before Sims 2. Does this mean the Triku family has been dead for decades before you can resurrect all of them? And how would Fricorith's grave have gotten from the Hollow Ground Cemetery to the House of Fallen Trees in downtown? There is room for wacky theories there if you wish it. But I'm gonna go with the most likely answer, which brings me to the next tidbit. In Sims 3, Fricorith burned to death, evidenced by his orange color as a ghost and the fire death plaque on his grave. Some have hypothesized that this was Maxis' way of correcting a bit of lore, saying that Fricorith was actually meant to die by fire in Sims 2 as well, like his cousin. So what happened to them? Why did Maxis decide to make a whole family of Sims and then kill them off before they shipped nightlife? The answers may lie. In the basement. Yes, in the basement of the House of Fallen Trees, there are two coffins. 
the nightlife expansion introduced vampires to Sims 2, so the Triku family was most certainly created with this in mind. Most theories revolve around them being vampires. If they were, their deaths by fire could be a nod to modern vampire lore stemming from novels like Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. A common method of vampire death in her books is fire, either by bursting into flame from being out in the sun or having their resting place set on fire. Death by burning to ash in particular would explain why none of the Trikus have memories of a fire, as there wouldn't have been one on the lot. Maybe for Korath's death was an accident in setting that up. The easiest way I know to get Sims to stay outside when their needs are tanking is to make them lie down and watch clouds, and that's how they die by satellite. Anyway, Anne Rice also popularized New Orleans as a vampiric setting. Why is that relevant? Well, let's get into why the Triku family is named the way it is. There's a place in New Orleans at 711 Bourbon Street, popularly called the Triku House. Dr. Joseph Triku built the house in 1832. Tragically, his grandniece Penelope fell down the stairs from the third floor and died. He was so distraught by her death that he promptly sold the house and moved out. The place is reputed to be haunted by the ghosts of Penelope and various other people. The Triku family is fairly well known in New Orleans, as they were wealthy and owned a number of properties in the area. There's even a street named after them. Today, at the time of my writing this, the Triku house is unlived in and unused. However, in previous years, including in 2005 when Nightlife was released, it was used as a bar and restaurant, and later a nightclub. From the name, to the haunting, and even the area as a popular setting of vampire fiction, it seems clear that Maxis took inspiration from this place. It's also worth mentioning that the name of the lot the Sims lived in, the House of Fallen Trees, could very well be a pun on the name Triku, with the fallen trees the name refers to being none other than the Triku family itself. Going along with the New Orleans theme, we could further theorize that their deaths by fire may be a nod to the historical Great Fires that ravaged the French quarter of the city in the late 1700s. And what better to burn than fallen trees? Well, maybe phoenixes. It seems that three of the Trikus got their first names from the Dragera novels, a fantasy series by Stephen Brist. For Korath is a word in one of its fictional languages, which means nearly the end of winter. For Korath's father, Kvornin, is likely from another fictional word, Kvorun or Kvirinun, meaning time of melting snows. With their names, we get a sense of spring imagery, of rebirth, and new beginnings. The third one with the Dragera-inspired name is Nylicet, who is named after what seems to be a very minor character in the series. In the passage I found, she and her husband are traveling to the city where the king resides, when the main characters meet them in passing. Later, one of them remarks that they believe Nylicet and her husband were magically masking their true appearance, since they noticed for a split second that Nylicet had a strand of gold hair and her husband had golden eyes. It's worth mentioning that Sim Frikorath and Sim Nylicet both have blonde hair. These traits would make Nylicet and her husband part of the House of Phoenix in the books. I quote, The House of Phoenix signifies both decay and rebirth. Phoenix have a natural air of nobility, even more so than other noble houses. The fatal weakness of most phoenix is that they tend to become decadent and absorbed in their own interests as their reigns progress." End quote. The house is, of course, also associated with phoenixes, fantastical birds which, according to real-life mythology, live for 500 years and then build a nest and set themselves on fire. The next phoenix is then born from the ashes. Phoenixes are popular mythological symbols of renewal and rebirth. Sounds like the Triku family, if you ask me. All these symbols and meanings paint a slightly richer picture for the Trikus, a once prestigious, noble family who has crashed and burned to cinders, perhaps due to their own arrogance in some way, and after some time, is now ready to rise forth from the ashes and cold of winter, finally reborn into the warmth of spring. Or, you know, be resurrected from the grave as vampires. 
The Sims have complete character data, so it's safe to do so without risking corruption. One of the biggest difficulties I've had in writing this out is trying to present the information in a way that makes sense. I could take any one of these facts and go off on a tangent and completely forget what I was talking about in the first place, because it's not like there's a set sequence of events I can just relay in order. So here are some loose ends that didn't quite fit into the main analysis. One of the objects associated with the Triku family is the Grey Woman of Sim City statue. There is one in the back of the House of Fallen Trees over a pond next to the graves. Another stands Watch over Genicor and John Smith Triku at Gothier Green Lawn's graveyard. Two more decorate the Kryptonite Club out in front and inside at the back. The description reads, There is an old legend about the Grey Woman of Sim City. It is said that one day while the Grey Woman was baking a turkey, she got a phone call from a long-lost cousin and accidentally forgot the turkey was in the oven. This caused her house to catch on fire, and tragically, the turkey was burned. Also, the woman died. But it is said that she watches over all babies and toddlers from beyond the grave, and that is why they cannot be harmed by fire. Basically, it's an in-game lore explanation why babies and toddlers can't burn to death. You know, for immersion. So why is it featured so prominently on their lots and at the Vampire Club? There is the obvious connection with fire. Maybe one of the Trikus, possibly Genicor, was the Grey Woman, and a burning turkey is how the fire started. She doesn't look dissimilar to the woman depicted as a statue. Maybe the statues are simply memorials to an ancestor of the family, or a cautionary tale. Maybe it's just creepy decor with nothing deeper to it. It's difficult to say what the true meaning could be, but people have definitely taken it and run with it. Speaking of taking things and running with them, there are a few more characters in this story, and their interpretations are almost entirely up to you. After the Triku family died out, someone new moved into the House of Fallen Trees. Her name was Raynel Ninja. A single popularity sim with unusually large eyes. We know next to nothing about her except that she died of fright, probably from encountering one of the Triku ghosts. Technically, she could have moved in before they all died, but considering that they don't know her and she has no memories of their deaths, that's unlikely. One of the most popular theories about her is that she was a vampire hunter who tracked down the Triku vampires and killed them all, either directly or by torching the place. Her lifetime want to become a general in the military career could tie into this, but her story is mostly left up to the imagination. I was going to leave it there for her, but then I noticed something. The Kryptonite Club's description. It mentions the club is sponsored by the Rain Tree Society. Rain, like Raynell, and tree, like the House of Fallen Trees slash Trikus. It's even hyphenated, suggesting the name is made up of two things mashed together. Honestly, I don't know what this means. But I decided to dig a little deeper, and I found out there's a Rain Tree Children and Family Services in New Orleans, which began as an orphanage in 1926. Now this could be nothing but me seeing connections where there are none, but maybe she was a foster kid who aged out of the system, although that might raise the question of how she got the money to buy a place as expensive as the House of Fallen Trees, unless it was offered at a steep discount due to its history. Or maybe it had something to do with this mysterious Rain Tree Society. Or maybe she just climbed her career ladder quickly, who knows. Could the Rain Tree Society be a child services organization with a dark twist, making vampires or vampire hunters out of unfortunate children who fit the criteria? Maybe the so-called Triku teens are also related to this society. They're not vampires in the game, but these six young townies, Orion, Tiave, Lauren, Patrick, Swan, and Kestrel all have the last name of teens in the game data and all recognize John Smith Triku as their father, though he has no memories of them. 
Perhaps they're simply illegitimate children he fathered and never knew about. Perhaps they're distant relatives, linked to suggest their descendants, since the game doesn't consider family past grandparents and grandchildren. Perhaps he's only their father in the vampiric sense, and the teens were sired by him. Or maybe they're just breadcrumbs meant to lead the player back to the Trikus and give them a way to resurrect the family, since only a Sim who knew the deceased can resurrect a dead Sim without cheese. Regardless of what Maxis intended with the Triku family and the House of Fallen Trees, their story remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in The Sims 2, and maybe even the whole Sims franchise. It presents almost endless possibilities for players to make up their own theories, from UFO crashes, to burnt turkey house fires, to vampiric secret societies, and more. What do you think happened? As with any lore, feel free to slow roast the cannon and carve it for juicy bits. Just don't let it burn. Or do.